शिव सरंभां शंकराचार्य मध्यमा अस्मदाचार्य पर्यंता वंदे गुरु परंपरा स्मृति स्मृति पुराणा आलय करुणाल नमा भगवत् पाद शंकर लोकशंक शंकर शंकराचार्यशवंबादरायण सूत्र भाष्यकृत वंदे भगवत पुनः पुनः सहना सहन भुन सह वीर वहै तेजस्वीनावधीतमस्त मिषा वहै शांति 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 as we saw yesterday we concluded to say that bhagavad gita prepares anyone and everyone to handle any situation in one's life life everyone of course i'll just generalize a bit to bring up some context life is unpredictable this is common knowledge for everyone and everyone has difficult times difficult situations there are easy times easy situations when things are easy and going according to our plan or our wish human tendency normally is to flow with it to not inquire anything you take it for granted good things in life are acceptable they are taken for granted that's how it is supposed to be they don't surprise us we are not expecting um the good times not to be there what we actually expect is that they will last forever acha waqt hona bhi chahiye or it should last also and it should last also rehna bhi chahiye or agar for whatever my assessment of my life is and genuinely there could be difficulties in any stage of life and this is one universal pick up from shastras that we educate ourselves with this everyone's life has to have a certain phase or certain time which according to the person's capacity and qualification will be assessed by the person as difficult mushkil waqt hai ya mushkile hain ya whatever terms one wants to use that time what does one do how does one handle not just the situation because mostly such a situation seems to be out of control not within your control that's the time when it is most sensitive to the person how do you handle yourself in that situation so i'm just building it up again whenever there is a difficult time by your own assessment you call it difficult because external situations don't seem to be going exactly how you would wish them there may be things that are not in your control 
you cannot do anything about it. At such times, how do you handle yourself in that situation is what Gita prepares one for. That is the starting point. As one moves ahead, the knowledge becomes kind of a, available at an instant to oneself. Then one also begins to appreciate that even the good times, one doesn't have to get carried away with. So you have some sort of a balance drawn between the good and the difficult time. So when we say Bhagavad Gita prepares anyone, everyone, how does it prepare? It prepares by giving us the knowledge of what is to be done. How do you manage yourself when the external world doesn't seem to be in your control? How should you manage yourself that you will not have a fall? You will not get further and further. Um, you won't succumb to it. How do you handle yourself? And that knowledge given throughout is basic principle. It comes from the basic principle of dharma. Following your dharma. It is natural that whenever you want to get equipped with something, then you don't start practicing when the difficulty is there. It's like saying, I start digging a well when the house is on fire. What is the use of digging a well when the house is on fire? If you start digging now, of course, good that the next time it will help. But when the house is on fire, you have to find water to douse it some way. Digging of the well has to be done in anticipation that the house can go on fire. The house can burn. Which means, why we say Bhagavad Gita should come into everyone's life? And earlier the better. Quicker it is, better it is. Earlier age is the best age. Doesn't mean that you can't get it later. Any age is good. But why early age? Because when life will throw by your own prarabdha, if there is a difficult time, if it comes, you are already equipped with the knowledge from within of how to deal the situation and yourself. Yourself first and then the situation, what best you can absolve from it. So the knowledge part of the Gita, Bhagavad Gita here, the knowledge part of it, one starts to absorb irrespective of what is the current situation in life. In other words, you learn it for its own sake. When you keep learning for its own sake, then the knowledge that you've acquired promptly becomes available in the context that it is necessary of life. Other than that, sometimes approach can be, people can have the approach when you just see the knowledge from your current situation of life and you try and find an answer for that current situation. Are these two different things clearly understood? Could I repeat? Understood, no? Ek baat hoti hai ki jab jeevan mein dikkat aai, mushkil aai, vakt aaya koi. That's the time we start looking for some solution. And somehow, by some good luck of ours, we land up with Bhagavad Gita knowledge. But when we are looking at that knowledge, our mind is preoccupied with the situation. So we try to approach, yeah, repeating. So we try to approach the knowledge only from that standpoint. So that means we class to the class or we are you know, the topic that's discussed, the mind has already got a filter. Example is, if you are a very 
picky person, picky about your objects. And you are also um, very, very, you are also very, very um, specific oriented. You are very clear what you want. And what you in your mind, you go to wherever that place is, where you get it averagely. Supposing, um, okay, since we are in this setup, supposing it's a, it's a pen, a mic, you know, a light, supposing. You, you know what you want. Now, when you go to an available place where you get this, you are so clear of what you want, that your eyes are going to go straight. Ye nahi hai, ye nahi hai, ye nahi. You're not even looking at half the things properly. Isn't that true? So you don't, you just kind of, the mind, it's a natural process for everyone. Man jata hi nahi wahan pe. Seedha, seedha dekh raha hota hai, kahan pe mil raha hai. Jaha milta hai, wo leke a jata hai. This is a positive thing. But when you're going through a situation and you attend a knowledge base and you're looking at it only from that perspective, then you miss out a lot of knowledge. Now it's clear? So you do not, when one listens to Bhagavad Gita, one listens to it with an absolute open mind, with an idea that you're preparing yourself. Current situation, whatever it is you have to go through, however it will help, it will help. But idea is, this is an investment for whenever it emerges and everything else later on. So, dharma becomes a generalized principle that Gita will constantly fall back on. And through that state of mind, that human beings have in different situations. And all of us really, Vedanta is so simple kar deta hai humare liye, that all of us are, and after some time to us, we are all like, uh, what are those called? Clones. We are actually clones of each other. Everybody has Ragadvesh. Everybody has Kama, Krodha, Loba, Moha, Mada, Matsarya. Aske alawa kuch hai nahi. So you only have these in common from the perspective of the individuality in the negative sense. In the positive sense, everybody has wants, desires, happiness, uh, needs, and so you're kind of clones of each other. We are all clones. For dharma to be established, the vision, it's like rewiring your subtle body. Natural kya hai? Natural for us is, mujhe jo achha lagta hai, I go all out for it or I go find ways to get it. Natural hai jo mujhe dukh te raha hai, I stay away from it, I don't want it. This is natural pravriti. But like we said yesterday, if we have to understand what is it that is my dharma to follow, then we start slowly loosening the, the heaviness of the mind because that is an objective standpoint. So dharma, dharam, not religion, dharam kya hai is what is the basic discussion throughout Bhagavad Gita in different ways. So we started the first chapter, Arjuna Vishada Yoga. And we said in Vishada Yoga, that grief of Arjuna, which comes in the later part of the verses, that grief, that state of his mind has become a stepping stone to seek knowledge. And the first verse was the only verse that is bringing in connection, Dhritarashtra's point. And what is Dhritarashtra saying? I'll just repeat this for now. 
he is asking sanjaya dharma kshetre kurukshetre samaveta yuyutsavaha mamakaha pandavaha cha eva kim akurvat sanjaya i have just broken the words so that it's easy for you to hear whoever doesn't have grasp at this point of sanskrit the words that i have highlighted are the words that i am going to elaborate a little bit on give a little explanation on these words first word because we've started on dharma dharma kshetre in in dharma dharm ke kshetra mein जो कुरुओं का क्षेत्र है इन कुरुक्षेत्र दीज आर सिनोनिम्स इन धृतराष्ट्र माइंड फ्रॉम वॉट यू अंडरस्टैंड वी हैव बीन सेइंग अबाउट धृतराष्ट्र इफ यू रिमेंबर द लास्ट क्लासेस इज कैरेक्टर बिल्डिंग दैट वी हैव डन ही वॉज होल्डिंग ऑन टू हिज धृतम राष्ट्रम फर्मली होल्डिंग ऑन टू हिज किंगडम ही बाय बर्थ because the rules at that time was that a king cannot be given the a, no a king cannot be made if he has any kind of a physical um some sort of a physical um kami in the sense his physical angas are not fully working because a king needs to be um powerful so the rules at that time was that if by any chance any of your organs or limbs are not there in the body you are not born with it then you cannot be made a king this we all know dhritarashtra held as a grudge that grudge 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 i'm going to repeat this word grudge of dhritarashtra if first and foremost we want to start applying vedanta uh, bhagavad gita to us grudge grudge if we are holding any grudge what is that a symptom of what is it indicative of attachment okay attachment hairs han ji desire desire correct any holding on to grudge means ritam rashtram pakad ke rakha hai maine i will show similar symptoms as dhritarashtra is in that context unfulfilled expectations okay i will show similar symptoms in that relative context dhritarashtra held anger yes correct it could be anger also inner conflict in a conflict absolutely in a conflict between him inside him correct that's the problem hai that's the thing yeah. that's expressing as a grudge yeah. but wo grudge kya hai kyun ho raha hai why is the person holding a grudge he feels he is lack of confidence lack of confidence he feels he is he is he is a lower uh, because of that correct lack of confidence he feels he is lower he feels he has been wrong uske sath galat hua hai he has been wrong dhritarashtra feels he has been wrong because he always felt being the elder son the principle was the elder was becoming the king he felt he should be the king so since childhood he was holding this grudge you know holding on to the thought his self conclusion apne aap apne bare mein socha hua 
कि मेरे साथ इन लोगों ने गलत किया है दिस इज कोट एंड कोट इन हिंदी आई हैव बीन रॉन्ग बाय दीज पीपल हु आर दीज पीपल एट दैट टाइम भीष्मा वॉज द वन हु वॉज द मेन अथॉरिटी एंड देयर कृपाचार्य एंड ऑल देयर एल्डर्स इन द गुरु क्लैन इट वॉज देयर विदुर इट वॉज देयर डिसीशन दैट पांडू शुड बिकम द किंग पांडू बाय फिजिकल बॉडी वॉज वीक ऑल्सो ना धृतराष्ट्र फेल्ट ही डिजर्वड द पोजिशन ऑफ बींग अ किंग इन दैट थॉट प्रोसेस throughout when you are holding it for years and years months years it takes a very deep seat in your own mind psyche baith jata hai andar aur jab wo baith jata hai to usko hata ke kuch dekhna virtually becomes impossible it's a lost life ab matlab jeevan mein kuch विकास हो बुद्धि का विल बी अ लिटिल डिफिकल्ट नीड्स अ लॉट ऑफ एफर्ट इट नेवर नथिंग इज इम्पॉसिबल बट नीड्स अ लॉट ऑफ एफर्ट विच ऑब्वियसली धृतराष्ट्र बाय मीनिंग ऑफ द वर्ड इट सेल्फ बाय द कैरेक्टराइजेशन दैट हैज हैपन्ड बाय द पर्सनैलिटी दैट ही हैज डेवलप्ड अराउंड इट इट एंटायरली फंक्शन अराउंड दैट ही वॉज रॉन्ग feeling that kuru his grandsire the land of the kurus kurukshetra even now we know is a place somewhere near haryana only somewhere this side was considered to be a pilgrimage because king kuru had done a lot of tapasya there and because of tapasya i think it was indra bhagwan who gave the vardan that whoever over here comes and does tapasya or whoever dies here during war will get swargam they will come and stay with me indra lok milega unko so that sthan because of kurus tapasya penance and slowly the name dharmak kshetra dharm kshetra a place of dharma where dharma is dominant this guru kshetra was a place where people gathered like you have harki podi now you have at varanasi the ghats it was it is a lake here where people did snan on auspicious days like eclipses in those days so uh, stories in bhagavatams and purans is krishna balram from here um, from vrindavan um, um, gopas gopalas there the pandavas kauravas they would come on they would collect together so the kurukshetra started to be being called the slowly a dharmakshetra but in dhritarashtra's mind what is it he is feeling dharm to yahi tha ki main king banta ki kurvon ki jagah ka which is supposed to be a dharmakshetra by my earned by my grand sire this is dharmakshetra which is kurus kshetra the inner thought process of the person is dhritarashtra is he feels dharmo ke kshetra mein samaveta is ikatthe hue hain sare kyon ikatthe hue hain yuyutsavaha yuyutsavaha the main root word here is yudh karna ichha karna for for yudh you you so eager to fight ye jo dharm ka kshetra hai is dharm kshetra mein jo actually kurvon ka kshetra hai 
जिसका मैं सपोजेडली राजा हमेशा होना चाहिए था वेन दे आर कलेक्टेड विथ ईगरनेस टू फाइट ईगरनेस टू फाइट यू युद्ध सब इट्स अलाइटेड वर्ड मीन्स दे आर एंथुजियास्टिक दे आर ईगर दे आर याकुलता नहीं अंदर से उत्सुकता है लड़ने के लिए दे आर रेडी सोल्जर्स आर पीपल हैव गैदर्ड देर आर्मीज हैव गैदर्ड देर and they are enthusiastic to fight mamakaha who are these who have collected mamakaha mamakaha the word comes from asmad mere sab mere so when you just hear the word mere it can mean the entire army from both the sides ye sab mere hai kurukshetra ke hi log hai na sare everybody is collected for their sake so ye sab mere hain if he were to say that a state of mind would be different but he is not saying that he qualifies mamakaha and then he adds pandavaha cha and all these pandus He says, "My men, my people, or Pandav, who are? Who was Pandu? His brother. Up to this point, now it's different again. But at that point, brother and brother, they were a same family. But from here." he has so much grudge against pandu that pandu was made the king and his children are now fighting for this kingdom jo inka kabhi tha hi nahi pehle se absolutely correct What did I just say? I'm sorry. He was saying that this was never belonged to Pandus, but ha, according to his mind, to his his own thinking of remember we did a dharma, dharma, dharma. He thinks dharma always was that I should have been the king, and if I have been denied now that rightful place, I was denied initially. at least my children should be getting it why should my children not be given that status that given the throne duryodhan should get the throne so pandavas this is the second psychological point you pick up the first point you picked up was raj जो भी ग्रज हमारे मन में रहते हैं डोंट बॉद अबाउट अदर्स ग्रजेस जो भी मन हमारे ग्रज पकड़ के बैठे हैं देर वी विल हैव द टेंडेंसी टू बिकम अदृत राष्ट्र बुद्धि इफ दट ग्रज इज नॉट डेल्ट एट द राइट टाइम इन द करेक्ट वे इफ वी अलाउ द ग्रज टू ग्रो इन अस अवर पर्सनैलिटी विल गेट फॉर्म्ड लाइक अदृत राष्ट्र एट सम पॉइंट एक दिन में नहीं होती एक महीने में नहीं होती धृत राष्ट्र हेल्डेड फॉर वेरी लॉन्ग सो नेचर गिव्स अस इनफ टाइम टू नलिफाई इट वी डोंट हैव टू हैव दम वॉट एवर हैपन्स दिस स्लोली यू विल रियलाइज एज यू गो ऑन इन टू भगवदगीता बट फॉर नाउ दिस इज धृत राष्ट्र पॉइंट दैट वी आर पिकिंग अप द सेकेंड थिंग ही हैज बिकॉज देर इज सो मच ग्रज हेल्ड तेरा मेरा मेरा तेरा मेरा तेरा तेरा मेरा ये मेरा है ये तेरा है दिस मेरा तेरा इज अ लॉट इन द वर्ल्ड टुडे देर वॉज अ टाइम एज आई सेट द होल फैमिली वॉज वन फादर साइड एवरीबडी स्टेट टूगेदर स्लोली स्लोली दे बिकेम न्यूक्लियर एंड देन बिटवीन द ब्रदर्स साइड ऑफ द फैमिलीज 
मेरा फैमिली तेरा फैमिली मेरा मेरा तेरा तेरा माइन एंड योर्स वेन इट इज सेड एज अ फैक्ट इट्स डिफरेंट बट हेयर वट ही इज सेंग इज नॉट एज अ फैक्ट ही इज एक्सप्रेसिंग दैट फैक्ट इन इन प्रोपेल्ड बाय द ग्रज उसकी नजर में एक separateness otherness he is not able to bring them in the fold of his own family kurus ko manta hi nahi hai wo unko kuru nahi manta the other reason why they were not considered kurus pandavas because duryodhan also is going to show this in the next few verses the same trait of dhritarashtra that's why i'm elaborating a bit why the pandavas were never felt it is because Duryodhan also feels the same that they are the direct blood lineage of Kuru, whereas Pandu putras were born from Devtas. We all know that. You know, Dharam Raj se Yudhishthir hua, um, Arjun was from uh, Vayu was Bhishma. You know, so all Ashwin Kumaras was Nakul and Sahadev. So according to why the separation kept becoming more and more, because according to their justification. the pandavas as sons now are not a direct lineage so it gets stronger our lineage and in their name they seem to be given this matlab the throne seems to be one being offered to them whereas we are the direct descendants so mama kaha pandavaha एव अकुर्वत व्हाट डिड दे डू व्हेन दे वर असेंबल टुगेदर ओ संजय ओके सो द टू थिंग्स दैट इज हियर इंपॉर्टेंट टू पिक अप फ्रॉम एज वी हैव बीन कॉन्स्टेंटली सेइंग भगवत गीता इज आउटसाइड एंड इनसाइड when these situations are outside also we learn the same lesson when they are happening within us also we learn the same lesson so being watchful of the traits that one is engaging oneself with in this land of kurus where dharma flourished where dharma is the ruling um ot because of dharma the laws are governed people now my people and pandavas have gathered together with eagerness to fight what did they do referring to the 10 days before start from the beginning tell me why did this desire come we saw that all i will not repeat all that why at this point does the geeta start when bhishma fell that's the time he's saying now tell me second verse i'll just repeat it we'll do the i'll have to share the screen otherwise sanjaya uvacha prishtva tu pandavani kam yudhan duryodhanas tada आचार्य मुपसंगम यचनमब्रवीत एनी वन वॉन्ट्स टू प्रैक्टिस आफ्टर मी टू पाद बाय पाद वन पर्सन संजय उवाच संजय उवाच the char should not be very long sanjaya uvacha sanjaya uvacha drishtva tu pandavani kam drishtva tu pandavani kam vyudhan duryodhanas tada vyudhan duryodhanas tada आचार्य मुपसंगम्य 
आचार्यमुपसंगम्य राजा वचनम अब्रवीत राजा वचनम अब्रवीत संजय उवाच दृष्ट्वा तु पांडवानीकम तूढंदुर अनस्तदा संजय उवाच दृष्ट्वा तु पांडवानीकम व्यूढ़ दुर्योधन आचार्य मुपसंगम्य राजा वचनम अब्रवीत आचार्य मुपसंगम्य राजा वचनम अब्रवीत संजय उवाच दृष्ट्वा तु पांडवानीक दुर्यो तदा आचार्य मुपसंगम्य राजा वचनम अब्रवीत संजय उवाच दृष्ट्वा तु पांडवानीकम व्यूढ़ दुर्योधन स्तदा आचार्य मुपसंगम्य लिटल मोर त्रिष्ट पांडवा अनीकम व्यूढ़ दुर्योधन तदा आचार्य उपसंगम्य राजा वचनम अब्रवीत त्रिष्ठवा देखकर हैविंग सीन इंडीड तू हु राजा दुर्योधन ही कॉल्स दुर्योधन एज राजा आई जस्ट एक्सप्लेन इन अ मिनट सो संजय इज एड्रेसिंग टेलिंग धृतराष्ट्र सींग सो राजा दुर्योधन देखकर देन तदा उसके बाद किसको देखकर पांडव अनेकम व्यूढ़म पांडवास आर्मी अनेकम इज आर्मी व्यूढ़न इन दोज डेज आर्मीज वर चतुरंगी फ्रॉम वॉट आई रिमेंबर चतुरंगी मीन्स एलिफेंट्स एंड हॉर्सेस and soldiers and uh, one more angas how to how to form these what is your number and how to form them view formation view formation is how to gather how to harness your army's potential and present it the best example we all know is abhimanyu was killed how which view abhimanyu was killed in chakra view chakra view that is one of the views and there were many, many views there's one of the views that they call as which was like the nook of a, a needle so every they form a nook of a needle at the point of a needle like a needle and the army has to go through that so there were many types garud and there was uh, conch and many many such viewed him so now they both armies have gathered together uh, amne samne and seeing pandavas army the view formation that they had assembled that formed the view formation that they had come with he says duryodhana had then what did he do the minute he saw he got down his chariot 
Acharyam Upasangamya. And he approached Acharya. Which Acharya? On his side. Who was the Acharya on his side? Dronacharya. He goes to Dronacharya. Not always a maze. Can you call it a maze? It's not a maze always. It is a formation of your war resources that you have. So maze, like a maze is slightly different. Chakra view was like a maze, but not all of them would be like a maze. So um, he goes to Acharya, Dronacharya. He approaches Dronacharya. And Vachanam Apravit. He says, Ritarashtra, sorry, Duryodhana gets down his chariot, approaches Acharya, goes to him, Upasangamya, goes to his chariot, and then says these words, Vachanam Apravit. And then he says the following words, which is next verse. But here, the explanations offered is, Sanjay is, because we said he's a wise counselor, he knows that Dhritarashtra was the one person who could have avoided the war completely. He, he was in a position to, once the 13 years exile was over, rightfully Pandavas could have been given whatever was negotiated, and the war could need not have taken place if Duryodhan, I am sorry, if Dhritarashtra wished it. But Dhritarashtra holding on to that allowed Duryodhana to get his way. And therefore, Sanjaya, okay, I have till now not found the right English word for it, but closest probably could be sarcastically, you know, he's saying, Raja Duryodhan. He is addressing Duryodhan as Raja. Whereas actually the, by law, by principle, by moral grounds, by ethical grounds, by all grounds, when there is already a king, nobody else can be addressed as a king. Like for example, if you already have a prime minister, you are not going to address somebody else as a prime minister. Or if you have a president of a country, you are not going to tell someone else as a president of a country. So that's the joke that used to go on with the previous you know, um, party also. There may be a, but somebody else is getting the work done. So something like that over here. Dhritarashtra is only a figure. So Sanjay is pointing to Dhritarashtra that if they have assembled today to fight this war is actually because Duryodhan is acting like a Raja, is the one who is actually the Raja. It's Duryodhan who is now dictating the terms. That means you are just not executing your power. So he goes to Acharya, Dronacharya. And from here onwards, third verse onwards, why does he go to Dronacharya if he is the king? Because when you are a king, you summon people to you. Plus, the point was, that Dronacharya is not even the commander-in-chief of his army at that point. Bhishma is the commander-in-chief. Bhishma was already looking at the army. Duryodhan feels from Bhishma's side, he doesn't have any sort of a, um, doubt that Bhishma will waver. Because Bhishma Pratigya is to the whoever is the king on the on on the sitting on the throne, he his allegiance of loyalty is to the throne, not the person. So he knows Bhishma, however much Pandavas are dear to him, Bhishma will stay firm. Plus Bhishma had taken a uh, very specific vow and he had said he will not kill Pandavas, he will kill as much of their army as possible. 
and Bhishma was a great warrior. So Duryodhan is somehow in his mind settled with the idea that Bhishma will fight on his behalf, Duryodhan's behalf, but Dronacharya, Arjuna was already in the center. Arjuna was Drona's, in that mind, preferable student. Malab, he liked, he, he had a soft corner. The history says he had a little extra corner for Arjuna because of his skill. How skillful, not only just skillful, from all standpoints, Maryada and pres everything was how Arjuna was a preferred he had an extra affection for him. So somewhere, Duryodhan is insecure. He's got a little doubt. This is a second, third, sorry, two points we've covered from Dhritarashtra. The third thing that happens within us. Duryodhan means He's someone who is wanting to get his wishes fulfilled at any cost. Kuch bhi ho jai, meri marzi honi chahiye. Sometimes we hold on to the fulfillment of our desires like that. We want our desires to be fulfilled. When we are holding on to our desire strongly, we may get into the tendency to overlook whether we are righteous or not. Hum sahi kar rahe hai ki nahi kar rahe. We may not have the capacity to think also because the desire will just take us over like it did to him. And then, how will we know that it has taken us over? We will show the following symptoms that he now starts to show from the next verse. So why does he approach Acharya, because he fears that Drona's softness for Arjuna and the Pandavas, he may get a little soft on them. He may waver a bit. You know, before you fight a war, you want to be sure that your army thinks you are, they are fighting for you and they're ready to die for you. But if there is doubt in the army itself, if the army is actually fighting from the other side, what was Pand, Pand, uh, Kuru's army? Most of them were already, they were just out of loyalty with Duryodhana. They all thought Pandavas were right. So even though the war is there, he feels somewhere that he is not going to be able to push this he wanted to be doubly sure that Drona is excited to fight for him and not for the Pandavas and that he will take no mercy on the Pandavas. So he approaches Drona and not Bhishma who is a commander in chief. Logically he should have approached Bhishma if he wanted the army's assessment or any discussion. So psychologically how our traits start to express in our words and actions is what is now unfolded in the first chapter through Duryodhan and later through Arjun. Now in the third verse, he says, because he's already approached um, Dronacharya, now he's actually come up with that insecurity has come up. It started ruffling his mind. He's disturbed. He's in anxious from inside. He's agitated from inside. Kya hoga karke? And he wants to assess if Drona's feelings are towards him or not. So he points to, he tells Drona the following words, and they are very uh, sharp words, I would say. Um, anyone wants to follow the chanting? Yes, Aditi. At 
तत्र शूरा महेश्वासा विसर्गा है अत्र शूरा महेश्वासा अत्र शूरा महा महेश्वास महेशन सी जुन सामुधि युयुथानो विराट युयुथानो विराट महारथपद महारथ अत्र शूरा महेश्वासा अत्र शूरा महा Maheshwasa. I repeat this again, and don't worry at all. By the end of the first chapter, the first chapter has a little few difficult words. It is all I I always tell people: if you cross through the first chapter, that means rest of it is now very easy because all these are names that are so difficult to pronounce because they don't exist today in the world. But that's the way the names are, so don't get uh, fluttered at it at all. अत्र शूरा महेश्वासा अत्र शूरा महेश्वासा भीमार्जुन सामुधि भीमार्जुन सामुधि युयुथानो विराट युयुथानो विराट द्रुपद महारथ द्रुपद महारथ वेरी गुड वन स्मॉल विल डू अत्र शूरा महेश्वासा अत्र शूरा महेश्वासा हिमाजुन सामुधि हिमाजुन सामुधि युयुथानो विराट युयुथानो विराट द्रुपद महारथ द्रुपद महारथ वेरी गुड ऑल टुगेदर अत्र शूरा महेश्वासा भीमाजुन सामुधि अत्र शूरा महेश्वासाजुनाधानो विराट द्रुपद महारथ युयुथानो विराट द्रुपद महारथ गुड अत्र शूरा महेश्वासा भीमाजुन सामुधि युयुथानो विराट द्रुपद महारथ अत्र शूरा महेश्वासा भीमाजुन सामुधि युयुथानो विराट द्रुपद महाक्सलेंटरीस टू इन्वॉल्व विद चैंटिंग ओके Uh, you want to try again, Aditi? Third verse. Yeah? Okay. Pashyaitam Pandu Putra Nam. 
पश्येताम पांडु पुत्रनाम आचार्य महतीम चमुम आचार्य महीत चमुम महतीम चमुम महतीम चमुम 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 योधान द्रुपद पुत्रेना योधाम द्रुपद पुत्रेना तवशिष्येन धीमता तवशिष्येन धीमता पश्येताम पांडु पुत्रानाम पश्येताम पांडु पुत्रानाम आचार्य महतीम शमुम आचार्य महतीम शमुम युधान द्रुपद पुत्रेना युधान द्रुपद पुत्रेना हो युधान द्रुपद पुत्रेना युधान द्रुपद पुत्रेना तवशिष्येन धीमता तवशिष्येन धीमता पश्येताम पांडु पुत्रानाम आचार्य महतीम चमु पश्येताम पांडु पुत्रानाम आचार्य महितम चमु महतीम महतीम आचार्य महतीम चमु चार्य महतीम चमु युधान द्रुपद पुत्रेण तवशिष्येन धीमता युधाम द्रुपद पुत्रेण तव शिष्येन धीमता युधान द्रुपद पुत्रेण तवशिष्येन योधाम दुपत पुत्रेन तवशिष्येन धीमता पश्येताम पांडु पुत्रानाम आचार्य महतीम चमुम योधान दुपद पुत्रेन तवशिष्येन धीमता पश्येताम पांडु पुत आचार्य महतीम चमु युधाम दुपद पुत्रेन तवशिष्येन धीमता गुड एंड गुड वी हैव डन थ्री एंड फोर बिकॉज़ दे हैव टू गो टुगेदर आल्सो दैट्स फाइन एंड ऑल ऑफ अस ऑफ कोर्स आई एम श्योर इवन दो देयर इज वन रिप्रेजेंटेटिव हु इज चैंटिंग बट एवरीबॉडी आई होप इज डूइंग बिहाइंड आल्सो जस्ट कीप हियरिंग एंड कीप चैंटिंग अलोंग विद इट ऑन योर ओन आल्सो so the minute he has approached acharya duryodhan now is addressing dronacharya and what is he saying pashyetam pandu putranam acharya mahatim chamum yudham drupad putrena तव शिष्येण हीमता इज टेलिंग द्रोणा ओ आचार्य दिस वर्ड ओ आचार्य पश्येताम लुक लुक देखो आई एम श्योर ही सेट इट एट द सेम टोन देखो क्या देखो पांडु पुत्राणाम पांडु के पुत्र पस्ट Can anybody pick up? देखो पांडु के पुत्र बूजी वॉट इज पांडु टू हिम एंड हु आर दे हु आर स्टैंडिंग इन फ्रंट ऑफ हिम हिज कजन्स हुज पांडु हिज अंकल हिज चाचा फ्रॉम दैट स्टैंड पॉइंट But what is it saying? 
look these are the sons of pandu in english it's very nice language but if you put it in another language dekho pandu ke putro ko dekho you can get the intonation kaise kya dekho mahatin chamum unka sirf unko mat dekho mahatin means huge badi chamum gathered together this vyudham jo inhone bana di hai vyu rachna ki hai inhone this huge army of theirs that they have assembled together that they have gathered together mahatim highlighted so i will explain a little later drupad putrena also look look dekho samne now who was in front of drona in front of dronacharya was arjuna almost drishtadyumna is son of drupad who was the first chief commander and chief of pandavas army and there is a story behind i think most of us would know that story drupad and dronacharya are my word for it is fremicles fremicles yeah fremicles what are fremicles they are friends and they are enemies so their relationship is very complicated their relationship they are fremicles they are friends but they are also enemies in the sense that both of them were in the same they were guru bhais guru bhais means learned from the same teacher their teacher was bharatwaj and the story i am how many of you don't know the story how detailed should i i don't want to get into too much of the details oh you okay 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 so now i'll still try to keep to the essence uh, um when they were in the gurukul they were very good friends when they were going through their shishyam uh, shishyacharya when they were learning in the gurukul through bharadwaj they were good friends and dronacharya uh, by quality by gunas was brahmin and also was the way he learned it he was a very uh, qualified kshatriya gunas also so but but he adopted initially he kept to the brahmin's lifestyle which was an bhikshacharyam so he chose to live in on bhiksha to the extent and because he was living on bhiksha the poverty had hit him after their gurukul was and uh, drupad is a king he was having his kingdom so the distance between the two grew a lot one became a king and dronacharya was kind of a living in poverty and because he was living in poverty to such an extent the story says his son ashwatthama was drinking um, rain milks like we have sattu drinks nowadays sattu ka drink he didn't have actual milk ever he had not tasted because they were too uh, not so well off in that sense he was living on bhiksha so poverty had hit him and the day ashwatthama first drank milk after that he didn't want to drink the other milk but at that point dronacharya decided he must get a cow because now his son has tasted milk and he wants only milk but he was so poor and he didn't know where so he thought who better than his own friend from his gurukul who is a king usse ek gai mangne mein kya jata hai he'll be gladly giving it to him so he approaches drona and um, i'm sorry he approaches drupad he approaches drupad and uh, asks when he meets him drupad kind of insults him he says friendship is between equals something like that he says and he says some whatever the story is at the end of it drupad feels insulted i am sorry get very badly confused in the names drona feels insulted he feels insulted that uh, drupad is called him 
not equal. Whereas uh, Dronacharya was very qualified from within and in all ways equal to Drupad. He goes back and he decides, he takes a resolve that he's going to show to Drupad that he is equal. So that's how he then takes on his Kshatriya uh, capabilities and he becomes a teacher of Pandus. Now, when he becomes a teacher of Pandus, um, he, for Guru Dakshina, when the teaching has got over, he tells them he wants Drupad's kingdom from them as Guru Dakshina. And sure enough, Arjun gets it for him. And when Dro Drupad is brought in front of Drona Charya, that time Drona Charya gives it back to him. He says, I give you half your kingdom back and now we are equal. Now this is what has been happening. Their friendship is complicated. So once he gives him half, he's established his equality. But that hurt, that insult, stays with Drona and also with Drupad now because now Drupad has also got insulted. Half his kingdom has been taken away from him. Now for taking his own way of revenge is a strong word, but for that he seeks help from masters, whoever, and they say do a particular yagnya. And the son will be, that's how Draupadi and Drishtadyumna are born through Yagnya. Drisht, because his purpose is, he wants a son who will kill Dronacharya. Drishtadyumna is, it has to, Drupad's son, born with an idea, he's born with the Sankalpa, that he will kill Dronacharya. Drishtadyumna is the commander-in-chief of the Pandava army. Now is the real point of the what Dhritarashtra is trying to do. I am sorry, Duryodhan is trying to do. You know? Because in front Arjuna was there, Dronacharya would have a soft feeling for him. Duryodhan wants to excite that hurt in Dronacharya against Rupat, whose son is Drishtadyumna, standing as a commander-in-chief, who is the one who is arrayed that in that view her formation from Pandavas. And ironically, I would say in today's world we will call it ironical because hum soch nahi sakte ki koi aisa dharm follow bhi karta tha. But dharma being the land, being the main force there, it was known Drishtadyumna has been invoked by Drupad to kill Drona and he was sent to be a, his student. Dronacharya along with Pandavas taught Drishtadyumna impartially knowing that Drishtadyumna is, is going to kill him to, at some point. Can you believe this? Has, have I mixed up the story or is it understood? I'm a terrible storyteller. Understood. Great. Thank you. Okay. Understood. But good. No. So here, knowing that Drishtadyumna, see the dharmas that were followed. Acharya dharam kya hota hai? Example is perfect here. Dronacharya as an Acharya, if there is a student, you cannot be partial to such an extent that that student is going to be the one who's killing you and in this context. Even then, he gave him entirely all his Vidya, just as he gave it to Pandavas. And so Drishtadyumna was a very powerful warrior. So now comes the exciting, inciting word. He says, he doesn't call him Drishtadyumna. He says, Drupada Putra. Drishtadyumna bolta to acharya ka feeling aata na upar. 
his student. He wouldn't have got angry at his student. Drupad ka putra. Upar Pandu ka putra. Because Pandavas, Drona has a soft feeling for. Drupad putra na look pashetam. Oh Acharya, observe this huge army that has now formed in front Pandu's son's army, which has been in this formation by Drupad's son. And who was that Drupad's son? Tava Shishyena. Your Shishya. Tumhara student hai ye. Jo saamne khada hai. Say it in Hindi with all the intonations. It's a very nice language and it conveys everything. Your, tumhara student hai ye. Tumhi ne usko itna powerful banaya hai. Sikhaya hai. You are the one who actually gave him all the skills. You are the one who's imparted all this vidya to him. And you, he is the one who's standing against you today. And who is this Tavashishena? How did he become this huge fighter? He's a dhimata. He's not an ordinary person now. He's not just an ordinary warrior. You have trained him so well. Dhimata. He's, he's uh, very intelligent in his planning. He's because in those days, Yudh was at levels of the view formation. Not everybody did, only the, they were, yeah, he's instigating him. That's the right word I was trying to look for. Yes. So what is actually being done by Duryodhan here? He's chabi chadhana, instigating him. Whipping up his emotions. Whipping up his memory. So that, you know, that, अंदर अगर द्वेष आ जाएगा, अंदर अगर हर्ट आ जाएगी, अंदर अगर फ्रस्ट्रेशन आ जाएगी, अंदर अगर एंगर आ जाएगा, अंदर अगर यू नो ऑल डोस फीलिंग्स अगर अंदर आ गई किस में हूँ किसके अंदर ड्रोना चार्य ड्रोना चार्य अगर वो चीज गुस्सा आ गया ड्रोना चार्य में या उस एंगर आ गया या हर्ट more important that hurt was so deep seated, stayed for so long. If that comes up, then Duryodhan knows that Drona will fight, even though his heart is with Pandavas, he will still fight from Duryodhana's point. And then he continues. Next two verses are. In continuity of this thought process, uh, we'll take one more verse and then we'll continue with a little bit of chanting rule today because we'll finish the chanting rule so that next time you will have a better idea. But let's finish one more. Anybody else wants to practice chanting? Okay, you can hear. I will just say it, you just hear then. I can. Ah, okay. So we'll alternate between Aditi and you till someone else offers and says, I also want to do. Okay. Atra Shura Mahi. Ah, we've already done this. Okay, we've already chanted this, no? Ah, so I can explain this. Sorry, next, next verse we'll chant. Now he says, Atra Shura Maheshwasaha. Atra Shura. Maheshwasaha Bhima Arjuna Sama Yudhi Yuyudhanaha Viratha Cha Drupadaha Cha Maharathaha He told him to see first Drupadaputra. Now he says, assembled here opposite to them in this huge army. Chura, they are brave, they are great, mighty, brave. Maheshwasaha, they are also very, they are not just brave, they are very qualified. Maheshwasaha, they are like closer to Maheshwara, how we would call, 
means they have that much skill they have acquired so much talent capability capability is the right word all these standing across he says they are all so equal each one of them is team or arjun ke saman in fighting yudhi in in battle ek ek is as qualified as bhima and arjuna is because from pandavas side arjuna and bhima were considered the best warriors and definitely duryodhan we know has a special ill will for both of them so he has a special neg- extra negative mirchi masala dal ke negativity for both of them you know so it's like acche se tadka di hui negativity for both of them so he's he's got the strong inside that he knows they are good warriors and it's not that duryodhan was a weak warrior he was also a very strong warrior but in his mind looking at all this there is some sort of inner knowingness that there is a possibility because that fear of loss of the battle has emerged in him not fear of his capability fear of the outcome of the battle why has that fear emerged now this is another point you take psychologically when does fear emerge at the outcome insecurity insecurity when you know against and ji against yes when you know that you are not may not be or heart to heart you know you are also in the wrong there is a possibility not possibility alone when you yourself know that you have adopted wrong thing you've done wrong things to pandavas he knows because a war hasn't happened you know just like that this war has been a culmination of all the wrong things that were done to pandavas and after all the negotiations sam adam danda bhed sab kuch attempt karne ke baad last resort was war and he knows by his own feeling that he has done adharma wrong and because of that he starts you know jab koi galat kuch karta hai have you seen a child uh who has for the first time made a mistake and you try and tell the child tumne galat kiya hai how they will start blabbering nahi nahi humne nahi kiya hai usse ye ye wo wo usne aise kara hai usne waise kara hai ye that and that whole thing is just blabbering 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 i i give this example because the only thing i remember once as a kid i didn't want to go to school that day and um, i didn't know i had heard my friends make excuses all kind of stomach ache and headache and this and that so i tried throwing one to my mother also once i was really very young choti first time school going mom must be nursery kindergarten so i tell my mother mera na mujhe na chakkar aa raha hai and i do this i rotate my head because that's the only thing i think chakkar ma sa chakkar chakkar aa raha means chakkar aise chakkar aata hoga now the minute i do this i know i am saying a lie कुछ मुझे पता ही नहीं चक्कर क्या होता है बट मुझे एक्सक्यूज करना है कुछ तो और वो एक्सक्यूज विजिबल होना चाहिए मेरी मदर को पेट दर्द तो उनको दिखेगा नहीं तो अगर कुछ उन्हें दिखेगा तो मान जाएंगी कि दे नी टूडे शी डजेंट वॉन्ट टू गो टू स्कूल लेटर्स एक्सक्यूज उसको चक्कर आ रहे हैं बट द मिनट आई डू दिस मुझे चक्कर आ रहे हैं द होल हाउस स्टार्ट एड लाफिंग because it's a lie but i started getting anxious anxious as in making excuses but why are they laughing so you start making all kinds of reasons and excuses to convince the opposite side that you really have chakkar coming and you should be excused from school today ye sari blabbering kahan se shuru hui in that knowledge is there when we do something wrong we know it is wrong most of times when we are making excuses we know we are making excuses 
and how is it expressing like Duryodhana? He has, we'll expand it in the next class a little more. When he says mighty army, huge army, this was an incorrect statement. Factually speaking, Kaurava's army in those days, Akshaunis, there are actual numbers, Akshaunis was battalions. Uh, Kaurava army had 11 battalions and Pandava army had 7 battalions. That was a huge difference of army. But when you see the end of it, in Duryodhan's mind, the power and strength of Pandava's army is so exaggerated that he is not appreciating his, his strong army. He is seeing the strength of the opposite army. So he says, they are all very, very strong warriors. He takes a few names and each of them is a Maharathi. This also more, there are some Rathis and then Atirathis and then, then one more. We'll do this in the next class to, to show in his mind how that army that stands in front of him is very powerful and that exaggeration that comes in his mind out of fear of the consequence that he may be facing. He is confident to start off with, but he knows inside. He's a strong warrior, but he still suspects that that army can be, it's all miss now that discrimination has gone. Um, Mis there is a miscalculation now happening because his emotions have overpowered him, are beginning to overpower him. And later you will see when Arjuna's emotions overpower him and how Duryodhana's emotions overpower him, absolute different states of mind they both show. And we are all of these at different times. I'll stop here. Is that okay? Any questions so far from here, from the topic? This is a story anyway. We entered the story part. So, and picking up the psychological symptoms of samsara. What actually psychology is, is all another word is samsara. So you start picking up the traits and start connecting those and then you arrive at the fundamental necessary trait for your self-development. Okay. So I am stopping this but I will just take a few minutes of finishing the, the rules that we were seeing yesterday. I'll just cover generally so that for next time you will have some better idea. This we did yesterday, everybody. Uh, checking the vowel length, consonant half a full, mahapran or alpapran, visarga or anuswara, and the nasal letters. Now, few more rules. Don't get overwhelmed. We'll do one at a time. No hurry at all. We have 700 verses to practice. Aram say. At the end of it, uh, everybody would have learned it. Okay, so, visarga is those two dots. When it is followed by ch, sh, or s, then it is pronounced with the following letter respectively. For example, when we do shantihi, shantihi, shantihi at the end of the invocation, the sarga here after every shanti is followed by this sh. Right? So this visarga can be chanted as sha, half sha, instead of visarga. You can say shantihi, pause, shantihi, pause, shantihi. Or you can say shanti, shanti, shantihi. 
so when you are doing it without a pause without a break the visarga that follows the a letter sh and sh sh or s also becomes sh sh or s next one is when a visarga is followed by k or kh then there is a specific sound it's like a half pronunciation of the visarga ah, it's almost like not heard it's a specific term called jiva mulia when the visarga is followed by p or ph there is a little expulsion of the sound which is like a f and sometimes it can also be like a when it is followed by p this sound is upadhamaniya don't worry about the words as we practice you will get it upadhamaniya then sorry visarga at the end of the pada pada you remember is eight letters one line has 16 when we are breaking at eight letters if there is a visarga at the end of the eight letters at the first pada they are called four padas in a verse at the end of any pada if there is a visarga before you chant the next pada if you are giving a break you will pronounce the visarga it will be there and sometimes uh sometimes like we just saw um in this verse we just, that there should have been a visarga but it is omitted for the sake of the uh, sandhi rule so you have to bring it back into pronunciation when you are chanting we'll practice and you'll get them then there are some anuswara rules anuswara was that dot that ma dot anuswara at the end of a pada where where we are breaking the sound is chanted as its own mm, um is chanted fully but then there are optional rules so that the meter is not broken and in that optional rule means within the pada if there is an anuswara and it follows a consonant then the anuswara will take the nasal of that group consonant like here we saw vyudham duryodhanastada you can say vyudham duryodhanastada or you can say vyudham duryodhanastada ta tha da dha na okay so i think we did the, ah, here it is hmm? so you see sanjaya uvacha the short at the end of the words the long vowels drishtwa short again tu pandavani kam this is anuswara because it is broken we are chanting it as am full but here the dot vyudhan duryodhana the where is the 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 so the nasal of this is the fifth letter this these are called the nasals so instead of ma you will chant it as na duryod i'm sorry vyudhan duryodhanastada in even this sa is a actually a sandhi vyudhan duryodhanastada but if you it's an option if you want to keep it as am then you must give it a little pause before you say duryodhan which would mean vyudham duryodhanastada or vyudhan duryodhanastada correct okay? because it's an option better is to stick to any one we normally do the sandhi we prefer to chant with this and shruti on her channel has also given the rules for if anybody wants to go through them some i think most of them they must be all of them i'm sure okay so acharyam upasangamya these are also this is at the end is a short vowel and this is what we didn't bravit 
This is half letter, half consonant. Most of us in North, because Hindi doesn't have this distinction, so most of us in North will say ta, pull, vachanam, vachanam bravita, whereas it is vachanam bravita. Okay, some notes, you can keep it. Few verses, I'll try and see if I get the time. We, when we chant, we'll bring this chart so that you can, or in your book, you can start mentioning initially if you're interested. Otherwise, we'll just do it like this and you can keep practicing whoever's interested. Anji. In Uvacha, the cha is full, right? There's no halan. Yeah. But, but you said it's a short Uvach. Ah, because what is va is That's long. It. If it was a long, then it would have become cha. Yeah, but uh, it's not cha, but it's cha or hmm. cha. Ah, so it, this is ta, ta, ta. So this would have been ch, ch, cha. So it's not cha, it's ch. Yeah. Ah. Okay. Everyone. So of course this is not our primary purpose, and I know many people get a little initially we want to get to the knowledge part, but it's nice by the time 700, if God willing, 700 verses. Long way to go. What is that? Journey of a hundred miles begins with the first step. We have taken the first step. We have sat in the car that takes us to Gangotri. Let us see. Okay, so we will end the class here. I will just chant. Om Sarveshan Swastir Bhavatu Sarveshan Shantir Bhavatu Sarvesham Purnam Bhavatu Sarvesham Mangalam Bhavatu Sarve Bhavantu Sukhinaha Sarve Santu Niramaya Sarve Bhadrani Pashyantu Ma Kaschitukha Bhag Bhave One question, Anji. Anji, yeah. So last time we were discussing when uh, you were reading text from Mahabharat that uh, Dhritarashtra calls them a dharmi because he thinks he is on the side of dharma. But in today's, uh, you said uh, Duryodhan thinks he is also wrong. So, ah. no. Actually, he thinks dharma is on the, he is, he, uh, let us, re, I'm rephrasing my words. Both of them think they are fighting for dharma. Even Kauravas think they are fighting, they have dharma, they are, it's from their standpoint, the kingdom is theirs. So they are fighting for their dharma. But heart to heart, the wrong that he has done to Pandavas, Lakshagraha and uh, all those other adharmic things that he has done, you know. That is what he knows he is wronged. So the war he is not saying is wrong to, to fight. But the actions that he has done before that, which were out of anger, which were out of frustration, which were maybe even if it is just to take um, you know, insult, hurt, whatever these feelings were. That is what he knows was wrong. However righteous be our point, our uh, means can't go wrong. Sometimes, yeah, you have to follow, but averagely what he did, definitely those means were wrong. But the entire Mahabharat, I mean, the means were always wrong. Even Pandavas or Krishna was telling them to, you know. Mm -hmm. That is, that is where the whole 
uh, understanding, the nuance of the understanding of dharma starts to come in. Then the, our famous, ex, uh, we take this example. Okay, let me take the exam, two examples I'll give you and makes it clear. A doctor, a surgeon, he's got a patient in front who needs a surgery. Now, cutting, killing, killing, of course not. Okay, amputation. He has to do an amputation. Definitely, no. But he is doing it to save the rest of the person, his body. Now, is this killing? Action is killing. But is it actually wrong? Second, exa second example. Wait, second example. In the second example, there is a chori karke bhaag gaya hai burglar who's, who's run away and police is after him. Or someone's thrown stone and the police is after him. And there is a red light. Jo bhaag gaya hai, he breaks the red light. But the one who is catching police, if he is to follow the law, he is, the, he, is, he is supposed to follow the law. If he says red light hai, mujhe ruk jana chahiye. Will he catch the thief? Where your motive lies, where your intention lies, if that intention is dharma, and the person you're fighting is already a dharmic intention and is adopting a dharmic means, then your means with reference only to that, it doesn't give you a sanction for all other things. But with reference to that, you will have to adopt the means that the other is following if you want to protect the larger cause. Mahabharat was instilling this in people. You don't have to be passive victims like Pandavas projected all their life to avoid a war, to maintain harmony, to, to continue. You don't have to be passive. If someone is taking away your rights, you have to fight for it. But you don't have to go and start creating halla gulla. Don't do that from you. You be busy with your... That's how our culture evolved into becoming extremely accommodative. You will not go out and disturb someone. But if someone is trying to disturb rightfully, then don't be. In the name of values, in the name of dharma, you don't have to Stretch beyond the, there have to be peaceful means first. If the it's resolved, then finish. Always adopt the process. Peaceful is always the preferable. Right, everyone. Thank you so much. Thank you. We'll see you next week.